Welcome to Church of the Chair, where Hard Case Crime will publish anything you write as long as your name rhymes with Heathen Ring. I'm your host, E, and today we ain't about that limp luggage larceny life. If you're new around here, I need to give you a warning. If you have not read all of Stephen King's works, I'm going to be spoiling them in this series. So if you haven't read all of them, I suggest you click away now. You've been warned. Today, we're talking about... The Colorado Kid, Joyland, and Later. So how does The Colorado Kid, Joyland, and Later tie into the Stephen King universe in the Dark Tower series? Let's get into that. And yes, in the original theory video, I had a video for each and every one of these, but let me explain why I chose to do it this way instead of the way I did it originally. That's because in those original videos, I did many reviews at the beginning of the video and sometimes in the middle and the end, I talked about my feelings about the books. Instead of doing that this time, I am only talking about the connections. If you remove all of my reviews from the videos uh, for The Colorado Kid and Joyland, those videos would probably be about a minute a piece. So let's go ahead and get into the connections for all three of these books. The later section, which will be at the end anyways, the section for later is going to be much longer than the first two parts. But starting with the Colorado Kid, the connection is very easy as I have already tied in the Tommyknockers to the Dark Tower universe. And the Colorado Kid happens in Haven. It occurs in Haven, but I do have a new theory for you, which I'll talk about in just a second. Before we continue on with the new theory, I need to talk about Haven, the TV show. I still have not watched it. My wife is a huge fan, but from what she says, the series, while having its own plot that is completely different than The Colorado Kid, the book that Haven series is based on, it is one big Stephen King Easter egg hunt. Now let's talk about my new theory. The dead man or the Colorado kid from the Colorado kid, his name is James Cogan, C-O-G-A-N. His body is found in Haven, 2,000 miles away from Colorado where he lived. Why this is interesting to me now, and it wasn't interesting to me back then, or maybe I knew about it and I didn't put it together, but he only, there was only five hours between the last time Kogan was seen in Colorado and the time that his body was found in Haven, Maine, which makes me wonder, did Kogan travel through the same thinny door, well, portal, as the ship from Tommyknockers, does that thinny or that opening still exist and that's how he was able to go such a long distance in sh such a short amount of time? Or did he just charter a private jet like they suppose in the book? I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on that one down there in the comments. Now moving on to Joyland, which is by far the hardest one to connect out of any of Stephen King's books up until the release of Revival. And the reason why I say that is because Joyland has been mentioned in multiple Stephen King books after its publication, so we can then go back and tie it into the Dark Tower series and the Stephen King universe using books like Revival that mention Joyland, and Revival itself ties back into the Dark Tower. Now on to the meat of this video, which is going to be the discussion of how later ties into the Stephen King universe and the Dark Tower series, which there are multiple connections and I have a few theories of my own to share with you too. The combination on the panic room in the book is 73613, and if you add all those numbers together, you end up getting, you guessed it, the number 19, which is very important in the Dark Tower series. But also, as this user mentioned, and I forgot to mention in the original video, Liz's phone, the combination to unlock it is 2665. Once again, if you add 2665 together, you get the number 19. Next up, we have Shawshank Penitentiary is mentioned in this book, as are, I don't want to say the deadlights, because the way they are talked about in the book is singular and not plural, as this commenter pointed out. So I'm wondering if that has any basis in connecting it to Pennywise's deadlights, or if they were trying to say that these entities, the outsiders, which we'll get to more in a second, how these outsiders 
might not be as powerful as Pennywise, although they do have some of the same powers. I'm wondering if he's saying that it's just the singular light and maybe there's something there. I don't know. Let's talk about it down there in the comments. Now, in my original video, I brought up the question, is Terrio or whoever is after either the possession or the replacement, there's a character named Terrio who has a lot of similarities to the character of Pennywise, but even more similarities to the creature in The Outsider. My new theory, uh, the question that I asked was, do you think it's Pennywise or do you think it's another species or whatever that's similar to Pennywise? Nowadays, I am fully on board the train that says this is yet another egg that Ben and the Losers Club failed to destroy at the end of it. Much like I said about the outsider from, of course, the outsider. And then you have the fact that the ritual of Chud from it the way the Losers Club beat Pennywise in that book, the ritual of Chud, or Chud, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, is used again to defeat Terrio, or whatever has possessed him or replaced him in this one. Now, I keep saying replaced or possessed, but I firmly believe this is a replacement scenario like with The Outsider, but that is the number one difference between Pennywise and the creatures known as the outsider in Stephen King's lore is that the outsiders use the DNA of their victims to change how they look and they become that person, whereas Pennywise dealt with the mind. He used someone's own fears to then scare them and feed off of the fear. But we also have another type of outsider that also, well, the outsider fe feeds off sorrow, the outsider in if it bleeds feeds off of sorrow also but more like a drama scenario given that you know if it bleeds it leads which is the old saying in journalism and i'm everything that i have been looking at throughout this series everything comes back to consumption whether it be the actual consumption of a human body or whether it be consumption of those fears. We even have the psychic vampires and the blood-sucking vampires. All of that comes back to consumption. And with my friend Jake Brannon's help, I'm going to be doing a much longer video on every time consumption pops up in as a theme in a Stephen King novel. But that video is a ways away because i got a lot of research to do on that one. And one final connection to the Stephen King universe in general in this book is that Stephen King quotes himself in the book. He writes in the book, he, he uses the quote, books are a unique are an uniquely portable magic, which, which is a direct quote from him, placing this in the same universe as the Dark Tower because Stephen King is a character in the sixth Dark Tower book, Song of Susanna. But that's all the time I have for you today. Did I miss anything? Do you have any corrections of anything I said in this video? Or do you have theories yourself on how any of these books, especially Joyland, especially Joyland, connects back to the Stephen King universe and the Dark Tower series? If you do, let me know down there in the comments. But until next time, did you get it? Did limp luggage larceny? Hard case crime. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll go now. Thanks. Bye. I'll hail the chair.